All right, by now, guys, you know I love talking about old wrestling. What you might not know is it's not my real passion. My real passion is helping people save money. My real passion is getting families out of apartments and into houses. My real passion is getting people's finances aligned so they can retire on time. I hated going to Walmart and seeing the greeter being 80 years old. She should not be working. She should be home. Why is she still working? Because she still has a mortgage. I want to help avoid that for you. The other thing I want to help you with, let's make sure your kids don't get saddled with student loans. If you've got a student loan, why did you get one? Maybe because your parents still had a mortgage. I'm not saying that to be fun. I'm being sincere. There's only so much money to go around. What I want to help you do is figure out where you are right now and where you want to be long-term. And I do it at SaveWithConrad.com. I've been doing mortgages for more than 20 years. And during all that time, we've helped tens of thousands of families change their life. I mean, routinely, we're helping our podcast listeners save five, six, seven, eight hundred bucks a month, but more importantly, get them out of debt faster and with cheaper monthly payments. But if you don't think it can happen for you, let me just tell you this. We are not the bank. We don't say no. We say not yet, but here's how we're going to get you a game plan on how to improve your credit, how to save a little bit of cash and how to get into that dream house. Maybe you're already in the house, but it would be nice if someday we could put a pool in the back or one day we want to upgrade to hardwood floors or remodel the kitchen or get a badass master bathroom. I can help you do all of that with no money out of pocket right now at SaveWithConrad.com. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket. And if we can't help you save some cash, we won't waste your time. Check it out. SaveWithConrad.com, NMLS number 65084, equal housing lender. And hey, y'all, don't take my word for it. Check us out. We've got an A-plus with the Better Business Bureau. And as if that's not enough, go look at our reviews. Read them and weep, haters. ConradReviews.com. You'll see more than a thousand five-star reviews. Our average review is 4.72 stars. Find out how much money you can save. Take control of your life in 2023 by taking control of your finances. We're going to show you how to keep more of your own money. If you've got credit card debt, what are you paying on that? 14%, 28%, you know, you can do better with the mortgage though. You may not know this, the interest you pay is tax deductible. And we can even show you how to skip your next two house payments. So if you can get a lower monthly payment, pay your debt off faster, get a greater tax deduction at the end of the year. And right now, right after the holidays, skip your next two payments, buddy, this is the biggest no brainer in the history of the world. Find out how much money you can save right now for free at savewithconrad.com. Or Hey man, shoot me an email directly. Conrad at savewithconrad.com. Hey guys, Tony Schiavone, need to call a timeout real quick. Wanted to tell your listeners what I've been telling what happened when listeners for a while now about all the cool things happening over on adfreeshows.com. The road to WrestleMania has begun, and in this Ad Free Shows exclusive, Tony and JR sit down to call the action from some of WrestleMania's biggest matches, including the end of The Undertaker's streak. Hard ending war. I thought that that Taker kicked out. I was wrong. And maybe that's what caused my prejudice that I wanted to see Taker win. That I, well, I would have liked to see 22 and 0 as well. But this is a historic moment. It really is in not only in WrestleMania history, but in all of pro wrestling. If you think about it, what does everybody want? How about a sit-down exclusive with Al Snow, who discusses a wide range of topics, including his dear friend Jim Cornette. Jimmy knows and understands his gimmick. Uh, and he knows and understands what draws for him. And like any good worker, uh, Jimmy's going to capitalize on it, you know. And and a lot of what you see is not Jim Cornette. It's it's an aspect of Jim Cornette, and it's just an aspect that Jimmy's turned the volume up on. Apparently, as the years went on, a lot. You know? <laughs> Ad-free show members recently sat shotgun alongside Kevin Nash for a live watch along of his WWE Championship match against Shawn Michaels at In Your House 7. Catch the event now on demand. Thank Different God story. you pulled the right leg. Imagine I told him give me the I told him to give me the I said, dude, give me the icky when I like, feed, feed me the feed me the right one or you're gonna be getting hip replacement in the morning. You could have made him a paraplegic. That's just a small taste of what we've got waiting for you. With four levels to choose from, see for yourself. 
by ad-free shows is the best value in wrestling today. Sign up now at adfreeshows.com. symbol of excellence in sports entertainment. Hey, this is Kurt Angle, and welcome to the Kurt Angle Show. On the show today, we'll be discussing my time on the Indies. But first, let me introduce to you my co-host, Paul Bromwell. How are you doing today, Paul? Hey, Kurt. I'm doing great. It's great to see you, as always, my friend. And uh, we are. We're going to talk about your time on the Indies this week. Uh, but before we get there, there was a couple things that I wanted to mention real quick to our listeners uh, because we often do this at the top of the show, and uh, sometimes by the time we get into all the all the advertisements and the sound bites, people are like, "Okay, show's over. I'm going to turn it off." But I think it's important that we mention two things, and then we're going to jump into your time on the Indies. One of those is uh, some merch. So at the Kurt Angle Show, merchandise is popping. Our buddy Dominic, uh, Dominic D'Angelo has been really doing some awesome designs, Kurt. Over at boxagimmicks.com, you can search Kurt Angle Show. Uh, I'm on the website right now. He's got that broken freaking neck sweatshirt, but there's mugs now. You can get uh, the Skim Rises Kurt Angle mug. You can get a, a, a pint glass over there. They've got some really cool sweatshirts. The Ratings Machine with your beautiful face. The Steel City Angle, which is my personal favorite, sweatshirts oh, and t shirts. Yeah. All new designs, dude. So I just wanted to hit it quickly and tell, uh, you know, all the listeners that love and support the show, because we got a lot, Kurt, that they can support us even more by checking out Box of Gimmicks. Uh, I mentioned before, we're going to get that new poster over there, all your guests that you had on. Uh, so that's coming. I talked to Maureen, our merch. Uh, she's over our merch shop. We're going to get that up there. So lots of fun, uh, new additions to the merch store. So please check that out. And then lastly, before we jump in, I wanted to remind everybody, I know we're talking about Kurt on the Indies today, and we have a lot of fun talking about his WWE days. We're going to get back to that next week. But most of Kurt's matches occurred in Impact Wrestling. And uh, you can also help us out by going to impactwrestling.com forward slash packages and sign up with the code Kurt. And that's where you can see most of his wrestling history, right, Kurt? Yeah, 11 years. You're absolutely right, Paul. 11 freaking years uh, of Kurt Angle. And uh, again, it helps us out if you do that. Uh, they're adding content over there uh, with their Impact Wrestling app constantly. Uh, so that would be a big help as well for the Kurt Angle show. So I know uh, here I am, top of the show, already jumping into uh, you know a couple of things right off the bat, advertisements and whatnot, but uh, we really appreciate our supporters. We love you guys. We love the fan interaction, and uh, I just wanted to uh, kind of push those two items right off the get-go, Kurt, but now let's jump into it. Let's talk about your time in the indies. We're going to do it. And uh, before you went to the WWE, you worked up some indie shows, Kurt. We're here today to talk about them. And I had found in my research that you did a battle royal at the NWA's 50th anniversary show. Uh, you work with guys like Dr. Death, Steve Williams, the future test at that show, Christopher Daniels, Giant Silva, Sean Stasiak, Teddy Hart. Yes, Teddy Hart, who you can find a documentary on Peacock about. And, man, that's interesting. And a friend of mine, Dr. Tom Pritchard, who helped train you. Do you have any memories of working that uh, Battle Royal? Yeah, yeah. I believe it was in Boston. Um, we were training with the Dory Funk Dojo uh, back in, those, in 1998, 1999. And uh, what we would do is we would train for about four or five days. Then we'd go to uh, do some house shows up in Boston. And uh, it was a really cool independent promotion. Uh, and that Battle Royal battle royal took place there. That was one of my first wrestling matches. I mean, besides my practice matches I had at the Dory Funkin' Dojo, but that was one of my first matches. 
And I recall that very well because Dr. Death took care of me. Okay. He led me through it. And, uh, I was really grateful. I loved, I loved that guy. He was a great guy. He was a beast, man. That guy was large Dr. Death. And he do the Oklahoma stampede. He would call it back in his UWF days where he'd do that power slam, that running power slam. Uh, but man, he was one of my favorites. A lot of people don't know this, but he was a four time all American in college at football. He was also a two time all American in wrestling. And he took second to the greatest heavyweight wrestler of all time. Bruce Baumgartner. He lost to him three to two in the NCAA finals. And that is impressive because he only started wrestling during the season in January and the season ends in March. So the season starts in wrestling in October, but he was playing football up until the end of December. Okay. So he only had a couple of months to get ready for the NCAA tournament for him to play second and, and lose only three to two to Bruce Baumgartner. <sighs> Bruce Bumgarner is a two-time Olympic gold medalist, and uh, that shows how how much of a badass Doctor Death was. Ah, I love that. I never heard that story before, so that's uh, that's pretty cool, Kurt. Uh, Steve, Doctor Death Williams, Jr. loves Doctor Death. If you ever get Jim Ross talking about Doctor Death, you better give up about 10, 15 minutes of your life, well, because Jr. is a big amateur wrestling fan. Yeah. Um, was in it yes and an oklahoma guy for sure yes. so uh so listen you also wrestle in memphis um as part of your developmental process and we're going to discuss get into more detail and in later this year uh, about that but talk about wrestling in these small tv studios and these little small arenas what was that like you know what it was it was a good beginning it was good for me to practice uh, go over my promos and my wrestling, uh, performing in front of, you know, a hundred, 200 people, uh, you, it wasn't quite as nerve wracking as 15,000. So I, I really liked it. Uh, it made me feel a little more comfortable, but when you're doing like smaller shows that, you know, with a lot of smaller, a lot, small, a lot less people, yeah, uh, you're going to have to kind of, you know, um, kind of, you know, I guess the word is, um, share with the with the crowd like when you have fifteen thousand people there's so many people that you block it out but when there's only 200 people you have to clue them in on the show yeah so to learn how to do that now that was a little difficult for me it, it's beginning. like including them in the dialogue and making them a part of it almost yes yes and that that was that was the toughest thing for me and, and you said it too it was so different than the big arenas what kind of adjustment adjustment was it for you kurt uh then when you do make it to the big stage and those massive crowds that's that's pretty big i mean going from a 200 person studio to 15,000 seat arena that's that's a whole different ball game well the cool thing about it is when i was doing this training in memphis they were also having me do dark matches in wwe on smackdown and raw so I was getting used to being in front of those big crowds, just wrestling, not cutting promos or doing pre-tapes, but, uh, having that practice too, in front of bigger crowds, got me a lot more comfortable for when I debuted. And for you, you've said it before you, you used to really have a mind for memorization. I mean, that's what you were really good at. So the fact that you could rely on that when you first started and had to come out and cut those promos in front of 15,000, that had to be a big help for you. Oh, thank God. I, you know, I have a, a photographic memory. I mean, I, there was one time I, I memorized three pages of, uh, of a promo. It was a long promo about China and, uh, they gave it to me 10 minutes before I went out there. They said, you need to study this and, uh, you know, nail it. And, uh, you know what I did? I, I, I actually, I didn't nail the whole thing, but I got like 95% of it. Right. And, uh, for that point in time, that was really good for me. Mm, no, that's, that's nice. You had that to rely on. Cause some guys don't, and they got to go out there and that, and when you get in the heat of the moment and the camera bulbs come on and you realize you got 15,000 people staring at you, it's easy to want to wilt in front of the pressure, man. Oh, you look like a deer in headlights. <laughs> <laughs> the sweat beads start popping out on the forehead and, and that old shit moment could happen quick. Uh, so, Hey, you know, and that's what I love the development, the Indies, uh, you know, they give you that ability to practice and get ready so that when your time does come, uh, you're ready to go. So listen, Kurt, you would work some indie shows during your run in TNA, specifically Northeast wrestling. They're based out of Scranton, Pennsylvania, also uh, Newburgh, uh, New York, where you would defend the TNA title against Christian cage. And you also challenged Samoa Joe for the TNA title. Did you put these bookings together or was this all just TNA and you're showing up and doing what you're supposed to? Well, TNA, I had an incredible contract. They gave me a lot of money. 
I had a lot, a lot less dates than WWE. I mean, I only had like 52 dates that I needed to oblige. Her. So, uh, bl oblige with the company. So what they did is they started, um, sending me out, uh, marketing me to other companies so they can make a little bit of their money back. I didn't get paid for these shows, unfortunately, but I understood why they did it. And after a while, I told them, listen, that's enough. Cause they started sending me to Japan and yeah. I was going over there five times a year. And it was <laughs> ridiculous and you know i was getting 50 grand a pop in japan and i wasn't seeing any of the money so it didn't didn't seem right to me after a while i was like okay i'm doing way too much uh you guys need to back off and just let me do my tna schedule and that's that's what we did eventually so that's how they were going to make their money back on kurt angle they signed you to this big deal but then they were going to run your rag at any chance they got to every tom dick and harry they that wanted you a while they did for a while but they backed off dixie was really cool about it so oh that's cool so as far as like, what about like conventions and autograph signings? Did you get to keep any profits from that type of stuff when you were with yes, TNA? They, they never dabble with that. My man, okay. all, all that stuff up. So even if TNA got me the, the appearance, uh, they would go through my manager my, and I would get paid through my manager and not through TNA. Oh, so that's good. So you were able to still make some side money there. What about uh, ring of honor? Do you ever remember having any serious conversations with ring of honor back then about possibly doing anything with them? No. No, I, I'm surprised, um, but but I, I wasn't really interested in doing anything outside of TNA. I did what I had to do because the company wanted me to. If they would ask me to go to Ring of Honor, which I think Ring of Honor at that particular time was a competitor, so they didn't they didn't want you know me to go over there and compete against myself. So uh, I, I think that's the reason why I never did anything with Ring of Honor. But don't get me wrong, I would have loved to especially in 16 here where you're kind of, you are going to work the indie loop. It would have been fun to see them bring you in for a one-off or something. Yeah. You know what? I never reached out to them and they never reached out to me, but, uh, the reason why I did my indies uh, that year in 2016 was because I wanted to stay in shape because I was waiting for WWE to call me back. And WWE was basically checking to make sure I kept my nose clean and stayed out of trouble for a certain period of time before they were going to bring me back. So I had to spend that year, uh, working Indies before WWE brought me back. And, uh, I, I did, you know, I, I ended up wrestling quite a few times that year, which I, I really enjoyed to be honest with you. I loved wrestling on the Indies. So that was essentially your plan. You knew you weren't going to resign with TNA. You knew you were waiting to hear from WWE. So you said, shit, I'm just going to go work on the Indies and, and make a little bit of money. Yeah. And it wasn't even about the money. It was about making sure I stayed in shape. Okay. So I went to WWE, I wanted to be ready. Unfortunately, WWE had other plans for me. I, I, I've told you this many times, Paul, but they inducted me to Hall of Fame first and then had me be GM second and then had me wrestle third. And I would have didn't done the opposite, had, had me wrestle first, did the GM second and Hall of Fame third, the way it should be. And uh, when they did that, I, I got out of shape because when I was uh, as GM, I wasn't wrestling in the ring at all. I wasn't practicing. And, and then when I started wrestling, I got injured. I hurt my leg. And then I was never the same again. This is a, a fun show for me. Well, spe spe specifically, I can spit it out for editing because I don't got to filter shit with this show, Kurt. Usually for YouTube, I got to filter WWE content or whatever. All the clips we have this week are YouTube. Uh, it's stuff that's already on YouTube from Independence. So I'm really excited about it. Our, even our ad-free show family, they're going to get to see these some of these matches too. We have a couple clips. Uh, but I want to find out. So you know you're coming to an end at TNA. Did you wait till you were done with TNA to start lining up your bookings or were you already starting to plan some bookings when you're so that when your contract was up, you were ready to go? No, I, I didn't plan any bookings. I waited till I was done with TNA. Um, I didn't want to like, you know, have TNA hear that I had some bookings set up while I was still signed with them. So I respected the company and I waited till I was done with them. And then I started taking bookings then. And uh, w once I did get done and people started hearing about it, uh, I had a lot of people contacting me, especially for appearances, not so much wrestling, but uh, I, I really love Mike O'Brien from NEW, Northeast Wrestling. Okay. He always took care of me, paid me really well. Uh, they always had two, three, four thousand 4,000 fans at all their shows, really reputable companies. So I stuck with those guys. I did a few shows with them. 
Well, since you went there and talked about a real reputable guy and a guy that you uh, really enjoyed working with, unfortunately, Kurt, independent promoters aren't always the most reliable. We see horror stories all the time, whether you're on Twitter or whatever the case is, you know, didn't get paid, not taking care of the boys. You know, did you ever have any issues like that? No, because I had to get paid up front before I even stepped on the plane. They had to pay me in full. So I didn't have to worry about that. Thank God. Ah, good for you. So you knew you were, you knew how to play the game before you even got going. Yeah. Cause I heard all the stories and I didn't want to deal with that. So I decided, Hey, if you want me, pay me up front. I'll come and I'll wrestle for you. That's it. Yeah. You know, and in their mind, Hey, listen, uh, it's Kurt Angle. He better fucking show up if I'm paying him all this money. And you know, it's your man of your word. I've I've heard a lot of good stories uh, about you. I was just I was just with someone uh, a week ago who said uh, who told me a nice story about you, Kurt. And uh, they tried to give you a little bit of extra money, and you said no. You said no. You got stuck uh, signing a little bit longer than you were supposed to. They tried to pay you more, and you refused. You wanted to stay there for the fans and keep signing. And I said, holy shit. You know, this guy just keeps just winning me over. He is such a great guy. Well, I don't know what the hell I was thinking that night. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you the story offline. I'll tell you exactly who it was. But, man, you impress the shit out of him. If they pay me, and, you know, if I, I have to do a little extra, I don't mind doing it. I don't you're, need to you're a good dude. Let's jump into it. Your first match on the independence, March 20th, 2016. And you wrestled somebody you're very familiar with Ray Mysterio on pay-per-view, uh, for you are fight, but it's an eye pay-per-view. So internet only pay-per-view. Do you remember about how this deal came together, Kurt? Yeah. Your fight came to me and said, Hey, we're going to start doing a bunch of pay-per-views. We want to do wrestling and MMA and all this crazy stuff. And they were like, who would you like to wrestle that's not signed with any company? I said, what about Rey Mysterio? They said, great, we can, we can get him. We can, we'll, we'll reach out to him. So um, the crazy thing is Ray and I got paid 50 grand for that show. <laughs> and each, you know, this is an independent, you know, company. I, it was, it was, was it each or each or you split 50? Each, each. We bought 50 grand each. We only wrestled 10 minutes. And oh. the crazy thing is it was in Arizona. And the ring was in a ballroom and Ray couldn't go to the top rope because if he would have jumped, his head would have hit the ceiling. So <laughs> Ray was limited on what he could do. It, it was almost a disaster, but we were able to make it work. Uh, but I, I don't think your fight ever did anything after that. Yeah, I called it you are you are fight. So you can just see how familiar I was with that outfit. Uh, listen, here we go. The show is in front of Kurt. Listen, a record breaking. 280 fans. Okay. It's at the celebrity theater in Phoenix and it features Jr. Jim Ross and Quentin rampage Jackson on commentary. This group went all out. Everybody was there. Yeah. It's reported that the show itself is a, not only is it a disaster because Ray can't jump off the top rope, but it's a financial disaster and no one ever heard from them again. So there you go, buddy. You, you basically, they paid JR rampage top dollar. They paid Ray and me top dollar. They wrote, they lost the boat in that one, man. That was, that was horrible. I don't even know how many pay-per-views they pay-per-view buys. They got, it was probably pretty low. Unfortunately, maybe if they would have saved a little money and put it into promotion, like I, maybe no, we all would have heard about it. Maybe we actually would have bought it. I mean, good Lord. I well, listen, us to do it, to promote it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Well, the match between you and Ray is two out of three falls and even features Brian Hebner as the referee. We all know who Brian is. You're very familiar with him. And uh, Dave Meltzer had a write-up about it from The Observer. I'm going to read it to you. Angle took the first fall with an Olympic slam and Mysterio the second with a 619. After a ref bump, Angle used a low blow and went for a chair shot, but Riff Raff stopped him from using the chair. The finish looked botched, and but Mysterio won with the 619 and splash off the top in a good match until the finish. Uh, so there you go. Riff Raff, I guess, is, is a wrestler that they had there. Uh, uh, I think Riff Raff was like a rapper or something. Okay. Sure. Riff Raff the rapper got involved. He was supposed to be an upcoming star. I don't know how well he did, but uh, they wanted him involved in the match, so that's what we did. At least you're comfortable, though, working with Ray again, right? Yeah, Ray was great to work with. I'll work with him every day of the week, without a doubt, no problem. But uh, talk about wrestling Ray Mysterio in front of 240 people. That's <laughs> got to be weird. That was weird, man. There was nobody there. I mean, the, the 
the arena was so small too. It actually wasn't that bad. Uh, it, it probably only seated 350 people. So the, the <laughs> arena looked kind of full. <laughs> the, the good news is you're coming off the impact zone day. It's not the WWE arena days. Yeah, yes, yeah, very, very, yeah, exactly, man. Very, uh, very conservative. Yeah, yeah. There you go. But I'm, I, like you said, I'm sure it was fun to be, uh, in, in the ring with, with Ray again, but you guys, it sounded like you still, you gave the 240 people, everything they could ever imagine with you two in the ring. So we did the best we could, but it was a very humbling experience to be in front of that small of a crowd. And the $50,000 doesn't hurt either. No, no, man. That was awesome. I actually, I, I, I'm sure we're going to talk about it later in the show, but I got paid a lot of money for indie matches. I was really oh. happy. I should just do indies the rest of my life. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Now you said you need 3 million to work a match at AEW. So you're, 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 you, uh, if you got maybe a little control over your ask, maybe you could work indies again. <sighs> All right, let's move on. Your next match, London, England. You're taking on Zach Sabre Jr. for Rev Pro. And uh, sadly, you have a knee injury here, Kurt. So it's not the match of the year candidate that I'm sure a lot of folks were hoping for. Uh, but we, I do have a clip. This is the first clip of the week, and we're going to watch it together at the ending. And then I'll read to, you what, uh, read to you what Dave Meltzer says. So let's take a look. Now, Zach is only just getting started, isn't he? He is indeed. There's a powerful kick. From Zack Sabre Jr., the penalty kick style strike. Angle is now troubled in quite a big way. Moving a little awkwardly, I would say. You might be right about that knee trouble. As Sabre Jr. comes in. Got him. No, look out. Big German suplex. Do not get caught by a Kurt Angle German suplex. He's going again. He's got him out. Here we go. Let me read Meltzer. And then I got some stuff to talk to you about this one. First of all, the crowd. Awesome. I know <laughs> they're always great in the UK, man. Oh, 
so much energy. So Meltzer said Kurt Angle worked with uh, on June twelfth Revol uh, Revolution Pro in London before twelve hundred fans against Zack Saber Jr. Angle got a big reaction. The match went nine oh three and was super heated while it lasted, and the crowd loved everything. All they did. Angle physically looks in great shape for his age, but his right knee was clearly bothering him. And was one of those matches where the crowd was just so hot for the idea of the match. Everything looked good and was well timed. It was mostly Saber doing his British style spots and Angle doing his trademark spots built around the Olympic Slam, German Suplex Series, and the Ankle Lock, which he won with. They played the WWE music for Angle and everyone chanted, You suck at him, but in a good way. Saber had gotten off a few Ankle Lock attempts earlier. It was a good match, but if you were looking at a match of the year and had those kind of expectations, it wasn't there due to Angle's knee injury. Angle then said uh, he was amazed at the level of the talent in Revolution Pro and put over Saber saying, if he's not a big star in five years, that something is wrong with this world. He apologized for his performance, saying he had a knee injury and couldn't show his best, but vowed to come back when he was healthy. So, Kurt, here we go. I got a couple questions here. Flying to England and doing this type of match can't help the knee situation, but what did you think of the promotion Rev Pro and how they treated you, buddy? Oh, I love Rev Pro. Um, I would have went back there again, especially in the UK. He's a huge name in the UK. He's been really successful in Japan. Yeah. And um, I, figured this, I figured some major promotion in the United States was going to sign this kid because he was so damn good. Now, back then when I wrestled him, he looked like he was 18 years old. Okay. He didn't have much of a build on him, but man, he could go. He was, he was a machine. He had so much great technique. I really loved wrestling with this kid. I think if my knee wasn't that bad, uh, I would have had a five-star match with him. We want to pause this episode of the Kurt Angle Show to tell you about something Kurt and I are super passionate about, and that's great seafood and steaks. Yes, you heard me right. You know I love food. Kurt likes food when he's not dieting, and he does have his cheat meals. But you're not going to get a better meal than at Jimmy'sFamousSeafood.com. If you're a fan of the wrestling podcast, you've heard Conrad talk about it and many of the other wrestlers. Their pictures are hanging up all over the wall in Jimmy's Famous Seafood. And right now, we have a deal for you. Jimmy's Famous is going to be a hit at your party. So listen. Free two-day nationwide shipping on orders over $125. All you got to do is use the promo code ANGLE. That's it. Promo code ANGLE, and you can take advantage of that free two-day nationwide shipping. Now, it excludes steam crabs and fresh items, but listen what you can choose from. I'm talking Maryland crab cakes, soups and chowders, oysters, signature steaks. They have so many different items. I'm talking barbecue spare ribs, wings, crab dip. And the sleeper item, their crab cake egg rolls. You haven't had anything that good. I'm telling you, I love it. I get it every time I go there. They have packages that you can buy. They have their famous gift box. That includes four of the world's best colossal Maryland crab cakes, crab soups, crab dip, seafood seasoning, the whole nine yards. They have a tailgate bundle that includes those wings and ribs I talked about, plus that crab cake mix. They've been featured on diners, drive-ins, and dives beat Bobby Flay, and so much more. And there's a reason for that. They've been in business for 40 years. It's a fantastic company. It's a fantastic place to eat. And they're going to bring it to your doorstep, freezing cold, ready to go for you to make some fantastic food and be the hero at your next party. Take advantage of it now. Jimmy'sFamousSeafood.com, promo code ANGLE. Is it tough for you when you, when you think about these bookings, was it tough back then for you with your body clearly hurting just to get yourself get motivated, get up, go fly, you know, across the pond, uh, with just the pain that you're kind of in and dealing with at this point in your career? No, cause I dealt with it my whole entire life. I, I've been used to this. This is what I do it, every day. I get out of bed. I'm in excruciating pain. So, uh, it, it never affected me. Uh, I always had a positive frame of mind and I, I always knew I could work around it. And that, that's the most important thing in pro wrestling. You have a lot of injuries. You have to realize you're going to have to work around those certain injuries. If you want to keep wrestling, you looked good, man. You look good. You're going to look good here. We're going to come up to uh, another match here with you and Cody. But uh, as I watch back these clips, I'm like, this is 16. And to your point earlier, man, if WWE wouldn't have made you take that long break, you were going here in the ring. Yeah, I was ready. I, when I signed with WWE, I was ready to go, but they just refused to put me in the in the ring. Uh, yeah, 
like six to eight months. And that's when things just got really bad. My body started getting arthritic. Uh, I was less active. Uh, you know, it, it, I just could not recover. And yeah, uh, especially when you're close to 50 years old and you take a good six to eight months off, it's, you're going to have a difficult time being able to come back. Well, the next match on the Indies for you was against the WWE title challenger at WrestleMania, Cody Rhodes. My goodness. Uh, it's a- amazing to see what he's doing with his career right now. So he was doing the Indies after asking for his release from WWE at this point. Was this one of your first times meeting him here? Yes. My first time meeting him. Uh, he was very respectful. Uh, remind me a lot of his brother, Dustin. Um, both of those guys are incredible human beings, uh, both very talented in a ring. I honestly don't know which one is better than the other. They're both extremely talented. And this is for new, uh, NEW, like you said, they're considered one of the better promoters on the Indies. And, uh, you said that you loved working with them, didn't you? Oh, you know what? They would have three, 4,000 fans at their shows and, uh, you know, they, they would pay really well. Uh, I didn't never had a problem with any payments. I really trusted the guy. Mike O'Brien's a top tier guy. Uh, he, you know what? I'll tell you this. Every year, WrestleMania, Vince McMahon, because he would recruit from NEW, he would invite Mike O'Brien. He would set him up in a hotel, a penthouse suite at WrestleMania, and give him tickets to WrestleMania and let him enjoy the whole weekend. That, that if you're if you're like if if you have a relationship with Vince McMahon like that, then you're doing something right. That's awesome. And by the way, this show that we're about to watch uh, a clip of twenty eight hundred to your point, almost three thousand fans in attendance. Uh, so this guy knows what he's doing. We're going to check it out. Clip two of the week. It's Kurt versus Cody. Uh, their very first match together. We have the ending. Kurt sneaks in, but Cody firing back. Cody going toe to toe. Cody will not back down from Kurt Angle. Oh, wow. Kurt right to the eyes. And Cody strikes. Cody realizes he's in a dogfight now. Oh no. No man's land for Cody Rhodes. He's in Kurt Angle's clutches. Those German suplexes. Body rocking. And he's going for a hat trick. Cody guts his way free. Cody Rhodes' dream of defeating Kurt Angle may be slipping through his fingers as Kurt. He's got something to buy, but no, Cody. A springboard. Cody connecting. Kurt toughs it out. Kurt Angle wants to reestablish himself as the greatest wrestler in the world. But Cody Rhodes has Angle in his sights. Oh no! What a mistake! Maybe a fatal one! Kurt! He's got the ankle and he's damn sure not gonna let go! Cody with a counter. See you at the crossroads. Didn't take him around. And Kurt out the back door. Cody Rhodes adapting that crossroads move. Going for speed instead of impact. And it may have been the wrong decision for him. Where does he go from here? Cody Rhodes. You know he walked into this match with a game plan. That might be out the window at this point. He's going to take a chance. He's going to put it all on the line. Oh, it did not pay off. still in this thing. And 
Angle's incensed. Angle wants to finish this once and for all. Kurt Angle. Hold on, Cody. He's got him. Crossroads. There it is. Kurt Angle takes the pin from Cody Rhodes. Will Cody do it to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania? We'll find hey, out. I want to tell you something. If you didn't notice, his boots said Cody Angle. They did. Had Cody on it. The other one had Angle on it. What he did is he made that specifically for me to wrestle me. And not only that, but he gave them to me to give to my son, Cody. <gasps> That's so awesome. Meetings to it. Cody uh, Cody Rhodes versus Kurt Angle and Cody Angle. That's yes. So yes. It was really cool that he did that. They were six hundred dollar boots, and you know he's like here. And now your and now your son Cody has them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is awesome, man. I'm Cody telling you, he is the he is a great guy. That's why I did the job. <laughs> That's my next question. How did you figure out that you were going to take the job? Because listen, at this point, you're one and two on the Indies, Kurt, and so you're yeah. you know. <laughs> so you're I'm sucking on the Indies. But you know what? The whole thing was, listen, I, I had nothing else to prove in my career. You know, these guys were up and coming. I wanted to help them out. I even would have done a job for Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, but, you know, the thing is, um, I, I just wanted to give back. That's awesome. That's basically it. I, I wanted to do something good for these guys to get their careers moving. Dude, and that's so cool. I love hearing that. By the way, this show featured guys like Jushin Thunder Liger, the Hardys, and Jerry Lawler. So to your point, fun card, good card. It's Cody, Kurt Angle won. There's three of these matches. You guys had a trilogy in 2016. Meltzer said Cody Rhodes pinned Kurt Angle after Crossroads in the main event. Short match, but the crowd was into what they had. The biggest reaction was for the ankle lock by Kurt Angle. Um, and, you know, you kind of talked about it. You're making money from the bookings. Are you also getting merch and, and all that type of stuff too? Or you, you have the ability to sell some stuff while you're doing this? Okay. I wasn't very good at merch. <laughs> I, when I was on the Indies, I never brought anything with me. I didn't bring uh, photographs. I didn't bring shirts or anything like Where's that. Where's Dominic D'Angelo when we needed him back then? <laughs> <laughs> but, but you have to realize I was making so much money just wrestling that it really didn't come to my mind that yeah. I should have made cur uh, cowboy hats and, and milk you know, cartons. cartons yeah but and chicken I, snacks i i missed the boat on that yeah chicken snacks too you're right <laughs> i missed the boat on that and, and that was a stupid decision of mine i just felt like i was a wwe superstar a tna superstar and i thought i was at a status where if you bring merchandise with you to i got show, you it doesn't seem quite as professional. I'm not saying I'm not, I don't want to put anybody down. I know what you're saying, but you didn't want to seem like, Hey, I am so hurting for money or whatever I, that I have to bring over my, my Olympic, whatever foam fingers with me Hurts to the shows. I, I totally get why they do it. Yeah. It makes sense. But at the same time, you didn't want to sit there and have to worry about toting cardboard boxes around, you know, as Kurt angle, I, I get it. It makes total sense. And so I do get it from that perspective, but now looking back at it, it's like, Hey, let's maximize. Let's I know, maximize. I was, an idiot. I was a dumbass. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, were you select? Like, did you have other opportunities come in and you just kind of picked and choose, or did you pretty much say, Hey, if you're willing to pay me up front and we agree on terms, I'm going to go work for you. Or were you more, a little bit more select who you worked for back, back during this year? Well, I wouldn't show up until they told me who I was going to work. Okay. Uh, I actually wouldn't sign the contract until I knew who was and uh, i did research you know like on zach saber jr i i realized how talented he was i knew cody rhodes and, and ray mysterio were very talented i didn't have to worry about that but I, I even wrestled a kid uh uh i believe in the uk uh or in scotland i'm not sure where it was but it was joe coffee yeah we're gonna talk about him about him he's in nxt now that's right I, I i did some research on him and i just wanted to make sure i knew these guys and that they were good enough that I, I knew I could have great matches with. Were there any big offers that were just too big or too good to be true that you remember back then? You were like, this is some kind of bullshit. Uh, you mean money offers? Yeah. Yeah. 
no, no. I, you know what? I was getting, I was getting 25 grand for a 10 minute match in the UK. And I was, I was pretty happy about that. I got it every time I went over there and I went over there quite a few times. That's nice. And then the, and then the group that went out of business after the one show gave you 50. So you weren't doing too bad. No, no, I was, I was actually doing pretty well considering what most guys get at the Indies. I, you know, I was making, you know, 25 times them. Now, let me ask you this. Were there any dream matches that you wish you could have gotten to do? Uh, I mean, I'm talking about, let, let, let's, let's talk about guys like Kenny Omega guys like, uh, you know, that I had my eye on Kenny, even back then he was young at that particular time, but, uh, he was really talented. I, I really enjoyed watching him wrestle in Japan. I saw some video of him going at it and he had some great matches with some of those Japanese wrestlers. Oh, him and Okada, just so many five-star matches. No doubt. That would be a dream match of mine. Definitely. <sighs> Kurt angle in his prime, Kenny Omega, <sighs> Lot, lot, a lot of fans of that one. You can still do it in video games. I'm sure somewhere you can create these guys happen in real life. Yeah. Next up was wrestle culture pro wrestling and they held uh, an internet pay-per-view in Newcastle, England. So here comes Kurt again. He's ready to make that 25 grand and you took on Joe Hendry and uh, also on the show. Cody was there. Alberto El Patron, Minoru Suzuki, I Brett Del Rio too. Yeah, yeah, we're going to talk about that. Bret Hart is there, and then they got Jim Ross and Jim Cornette on commentary. So these yeah. guys were spending some money. It was a big show. They 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 put out put out all stops for this show. They brought in the top commentators, a lot of top wrestlers. They even had Bret Hart there. He was signing autographs and taking pictures. Before AEW comes along, uh, there was a lot of places looking to grab market share and build brands. I mean, we're talking about WCPW, Rev Pro. Who was the bigger brand that you remember as far as who you dealt with in England? Was it WCPW or Rev Pro? I believe it was the pr- promotion that Joe Coffee and I wrestled. Okay. I can't remember what it was. I don't that's, know if it was that's WCPW. Yeah. They, man, they, uh, they, this show, they had to have about 7,000 fans. And I think that was the largest crowd that I've been in front of since probably since my early TNA days. Yeah. This is you and Joe Hendry, the one that we're getting ready to watch. And, uh, this is clip three of this week, guys, we're going to watch the ending. I love this because we always, it's either TNA or WWE. We're getting a flavor this week. So if you guys are into indie wrestling, we hope you're enjoying this. Uh, let's take a look. Clip three, Kurt versus Hendry. Uh, we're going to watch the match. Suplex. The one advantage that Joe Hendry may have is his youth and the fact that he is he's much less injury prone at this point in, in his life than Kurt Angle. Kurt has had so many injuries but competing at a high level for so oh. long. Angle. Oh, freaking nature. He's going for it. Oh, he hit it. Lord back. Angle in trouble. This may be it. What a matchup. Oh, no. Oh. Henry about a half a count away from securing arguably the biggest victory of his entire life. He was about a half a count away from shocking the world and making history. And if WCPW has shown anything from tonight, refuse to lose. It's the oh, thing oh, oh, angle. Oh, the ankle lock. And Henry able to counter it quickly. He had to counter it quickly. Part of the no way. Oh, the God. The angle slam. Henry with the angle slam. Oh. I thought he had done it. Inches away was Joe Henry using Angle's own angle slam to secure his, his biggest victory ever. This match has escalated quickly, and these guys hit each other with high impact moves, and they did it quick. This is not going to be a 60 minute draw, folks. This, there's going to be a winner to this match. I just don't know which one. There's going to be collateral damage to the anatomy that's already been done, both these men. And what's Henry going for? He's not a man that's regularly associated with going to the top rope and well and is that out of desperation is i think so man? i'm not sure yeah oh, oh no have you not from the top oh, 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 the angle slam right off the top the people just hit their feet oh, angles on top oh, oh henry kicks out he kicks, henry come kicks on, out joe. Henry, come on joe henry kicks out somehow some way Unbelievable. For the love of God, can you believe a man kicked out of the angle slam coming off the top rope? I can't. I oh. can't. Oh! And by God, business just picked up for Kurt Angle. The ankle lock. The ankle, by God, lock. 
It's locked in. Oh, and Hendry's holding on. Oh, he spun out again, but Angle blocked the turnbuckle. Drop toe hold. Good oh. God. Man, Hendry has hurt Angle. Scott Angle almost tapped. Look at Angle's hand. Look at his right hand. My God. He's thinking about it. Hendry oh. break Angle. Angle's, if he does this, is uh, curse Angle to snap. It could snap. We'll hear it. We'll see it. Angle will feel it. Angle will let that ankle snap before he taps. I know him. I know him too well. Oh, and it very well could snap in just a second. Oh, oh. Angle the counter. Oh, my God. What a counter. An amazing counter. Well, the, the Olympic gold medalist. And Henry is in no man's land. The ropes get farther and farther away for Joe Henry in dire straits. Oh, now ankle. oh no. Great finds the leg. All the pressure. Oh, oh no. And Joe Henry has to tap. Henry has to tap. Oh, my goodness. Hearing Jim Cornette and Jim Ross together is like serious flashbacks to my early wrestling fandom days. Was it fun? To, did you get to spend any time with those guys when you were over there? Yeah, I got to hang out with them during the day. They were a lot of fun to be around. It was good to see JR and Jim Cornette. I started my career with Jim Cornette. He used to go to the Dory Funkin' Dojo. He, gra he would wear, uh, grab a he would carry a tennis racket around with him all the time. Oh, yeah. Or if that was his gimmick. or whatever. That was his trademark, buddy. Yeah. So uh, he was a good guy. He was always intrigued by me from the beginning. He said that I'm a natural, and he he said oh, you have a huge future. He's the first one to tell me that. If anybody has a an eye for wrestling talent, it's James E. Cornette, my friend, and uh, he's still going strong. Got his podcast going, YouTube, whole nine yards. People love Jim Cornette, and uh, man, I tell you what, it was fun listening to those guys together. But I'm going to tell you what Dave had to say, and this uh, this is fun. Angle worked two matches, one with local star Joe Hendry and the other with Rhodes. So you worked with Cody and he's charging 25 grand and up these days to do a match. I can just imagine what it took to get Ross to fly to England in the middle of football season and not even including his fee. He was flown business class, which is about $6,000 itself. And it's believed others were also flown in similarly, or how in the hell do you get Cornette to fly at all? So these people were shelling out the money, man. Yeah, they, they were shelling out money. They weren't shy by any means. and They they brought in a lot of big stars, especially the wrestling and the commentary. So uh, he goes on. He says, Angle beat Joe Hendry in 923 with the ankle lock in the main event. They pushed Hendry as the local hero. Hendry doubles as a mu musician who comes to the ring writing parody songs that mock his opponent, such as a re rendition of Born in the USA that he came out to with the lyrics changed to putting over Hendry beating Angle. It's quite good and a great calling card. Uh, but you said it. You said you used to do research on these guys. Um, and so, man, talented kid. Hey, he's using your ankle lock and ankle slam. Did he talk to you about that beforehand or what? Yes, yes, we we planned it. Um, I really enjoyed this kid. I loved his gimmick. Uh, he was a musician. He would write songs about the wrestler he was wrestling that particular night, and uh, remind me a little bit of Elias. Ah, uh, uh, yes. This kid was much better singer and. Uh, he had more catchy songs that he did. Uh, you know, like mine was born in the USA. Uh, that was the one that he used for me, but he came up with some really cool uh, songs for different wrestlers that he would wrestle. I thought this gimmick would take off. I thought the WWE or somebody was going to sign this kid because it was amazing to hear him sing and play the guitar, N not just wrestle, but sing and play the guitar. He was talented. Listen, he's still getting it done. If you're a fan of Impact Wrestling, he's in it with Impact Wrestling, and he is entertaining. He was just on uh, their most recent pay-per-view, and uh, he's good, man. He's very entertaining, and uh, he may, it's taken him uh, a little bit of time here. He's still working, but he's in Impact Wrestling doing his thing now, so there you go. Were you always taking the lead in these matches, Kurt, in terms of calling the match? Yeah, but you know what? I, I was open to that. If they, they wanted to call it, I would call it. Whoever was shining would call it. So okay. if I was uh, on the offense, I would call the offense. And then if he was on the offense, he would call the offense. So I didn't mind him doing that or any of my opponents doing that. But as long as I was in control when I was on top. Melter went on to say he's only been wrestling for three years and given that experience level, he's quite good, but he doesn't have the standout look that WWE would notice. And he's not yet that great to where the U S work rate groups would want him 
at least not just yet. Remember, this is back uh, when this occurred. He won a rumble style match on a prior show to get the main event with Kurt Angle. It was a good match. From what I've seen in Angle's few matches this year, he's still smooth. His stuff still looks good with most everything built around a few suplexes, the Olympic slam and the ankle lock, but his matches are short for main events. Uh, what, what do you say about that? Do you feel like you just didn't want to do a whole lot of long matches at this point? Was it your body or just, Hey, we, we can do everything we need to in less than 10 minutes. We could get it done in 10 minutes. These were independent shows, not that yeah. they weren't great independent shows. They were bit, very big independent shows, but I told them the deal was 25 grand for 10 minutes. And that's what I did. Every match was between nine and 12 minutes. I kept it pretty brief, but I, I, I put everything into it. It wasn't like I was slacking off. I was taking bumps and working hard doing those matches. Your next match is back for what culture again, this time in Manchester and it's you against Cody. And, uh, this is our final clip of the week. And why do you think most of your matches took place in, in England? Was, were they just better with the money? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Listen, NEW, I did that as a favor for Mike O'Brien. Uh, they gave me 16,000. Okay. Uh, so that, that was because he took care of me for a long time, but going over to the UK, the money was just better. And I'm, I'm not sure why, because the economy is not doing that much better over there. At least it wasn't at that. It's not like it's Saudi Arabia or something. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? They always paid more, even for appearances. Yeah. Sometimes you go over there, you make double what you do here. I don't know why. Ah, all right. Here we go. Clip four. It's uh Kurt versus Cody two. We got the match ending. Let's take a look. As it is, it's judged to be a two. This one will continue. The fans chanting, this is wrestling. This is WCPW wrestling. Another German. Okay. Cody's brain's being scrambled. Cody Rhodes, if this continues, he's got to lose consciousness if he lands on the back of his head many more times. Oh, look at it, just bouncing off the mat. Angle with the cover. And somehow, some way, Cody escapes. Any, any chiropractor will tell you, folks, a blow like that, a, a fall like that to the flat of the back is the equipment. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, wait a minute. Ankle up. Ankle up. On that injured ankle of the grandson of a plumber. And Cody, he had to get out quick, and he did. Angle evades. Going for the angle slam. He scored it. Now he it. scored it. To level it up at one win apiece. No. no. Cody Rhodes gets that left shoulder up. Cody Rhodes is still alive in this contest. And Kurt Angle, despite the fact that Rhodes has an injured ankle, and he's delivered the, the angle slam, Kurt Angle has still not been able to pick Cody Rhodes, the young man. Oh. The straps are down. The Olympic hero means business, and the ankle lock is applied again. Cody Rhodes with nowhere to go. He's in the middle of the ring. He can't reach the ropes. Rhodes is going to have to tap out here. He's not done yet. Rhodes. Cody Rhodes. Crossroads. 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 This is how we beat Angle before. Can he do it twice? One and two. And it, oh, no. It worked in New York. It did not work in Manchester. Kurt Angle gets the right shoulder up. What a match. What a main event. What a spectacle in front of over 2,000 fans in the Silver Blades Arena. Cody Rhodes still has the fire burning the heart, the determination. But can he possibly at this point? He's, he's going for all or nothing here. Cody Rhodes on the top. Rhodes on the moot. Oh, nobody home. Angle. A second angle slam. No, he didn't get it. Rhodes, crossroads. Ankle up, ankle up, ankle up. And once again, he's the... got it locked. He's got it locked. Will he tap? Will he have to tap? Rhodes, Rhodes can't go anywhere. Angle cinching down. He's cinching down. He's got it. He's done it. Cody Rhodes taps. And the series between Angle Ladies and Rhodes and is tied. By submission. the defeat that he suffered in New York a few weeks ago. 
There it is, Kurt. Uh, the main event match, uh, the crowd was very hot, Meltzer said, for the short main event that ended with ankle winning via ankle lock. Uh, but, man, talk about him a little bit. Were you surprised that Cody had left WWE to kind of go out and say, hey, I'm going to bet on myself at, at this point? Yeah, yeah, because, you know, Cody Rhodes deserves to be. He is a huge star. He's main event in WrestleMania this year. Why? Because he's a big star. That kid was a star since the day he got in here. He's Dusty Rhodes' son. Okay, he's the American dream son, the American nightmare. And um, his brother was an incredible wrestler named Goldust, and they all had incredible careers. Cody was destined to be one of the greatest. And I, I'm not surprised by any means that he's at the level he is right now. When it comes to cutting promos, okay, he's got he's got skills there. In ring work, got the skills there. It just, uh, you know what? He did bet on himself. He had a list when he left WWE. He had a list of performers and indie guys that he wanted to work with. You were on that list of people that he'd wanted to work with, and uh, he got to three times. Uh, but he did. He, he 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 bet on himself. Went out, did the indies, helped start a company, uh, built his own American Nightmare character. And uh, by the way, I'm not going to get into all the conversation we're going to have about Cody here because you and I are going to watch that match that we just watched in full together and have a lot of Cody discussion for a bonus show on ad free. As soon as we're done here today, you and I are going to record that. So uh, make sure you subscribe and head over to ad free shows to check all that out. Uh, so we're going to move on and we'll talk a little bit more about that on the ad free bonus show. Your third to last match on the Indies though, you did take on who you mentioned earlier, Joe coffee. And this is for ICW's fear and loathing show. It is in Glasgow, uh, Scotland in front of 6,000 fans, Kurt, 6,000 fans. You know, I'm not surprised. I I figured, you know, uh, that's what I guessed was 7,000. So yeah, sounds good. enough. That's the biggest uh, crowd that we could find that you worked with in front of since 2012. So that's DNA days. Yeah, that's That's freaking impressive. Uh, the show featured Finn Balor on loan from the WWE and also runs super long. Uh, and the show had a curfew. Are you in the back worrying about that? Hell no. Cause if I didn't, <laughs> if I only had five minutes to wrestle, I was the main event. You're still making that money, baby. <laughs> yeah. But, but thank God I was able to get on by 10 30. I think the cur- curfew was at 10 45. So I had 15 minutes to get my match out. So, uh, I, I was grateful that I had enough time to do it. Yeah. Uh, Dave said, uh, the main event was angle versus Joe coffee. A lot of fans knew that the show had to end at 10 45 and it was 10 30 when it started. So they knew it was going to be that they knew it was going to be 15 minutes long. Some fans left, but Hey, they had a strong match angle. Then did an interview talking about how great the fans in Scotland were angle said that he had never met Joe coffee and didn't even know who he was until he got there. Angle talked about it being near the end of his career, but said that coffee was the real deal and that this isn't the end between the two of them. Uh, was there ever supposed to be anything else do you think in the future between you and Joe, or is this just a one-off deal? No, that's something I always say. I'm not done by any means with this individual. So, uh, you know what? It would, it was just something for me to say to keep the fans intrigued that maybe I could come back again and have another match with Joe. You always want to leave your options open. I remember at one point in time, I'll tell you this, uh, Brock Lesnar, I wrestled him over in Japan. I won the IWGP title from him. And afterward he pulls me aside and says, Hey, ask for a rematch with me. I'm like, why? Yeah. He's like, I just want another rematch. I want the money. There <laughs> so, you go. So I did. I, at the press conference, I said, I want a rematch with Brock Lesnar. I'm like, why am I asking for a rematch when I win, when I won the title? I didn't lose. So it didn't make any sense that I'm asking for the rematch. But Brock won another payday. So Payday. I it's all about the payday, baby. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, Coffee, for, and most of you all know that listening to the show, he is in NXT currently. And uh, I mean, we see big, big things from him in the WWE, don't you, Kurt? Oh, yeah, definitely. That kid's talented. Your last match in England, which is advertised uh, here as is for the WCPW again, and it's against Alberto El Patron, Alberto Del Rio, as you know him. It's February 12th, 2017. And uh, at this point, you probably knew, hey, I'm going back to WWE, didn't you? Yes, yes. I knew at this particular time I was going back to WWE. I knew this would be my last independent match, and I was glad it was with Del Rio. I was always a fan of his when he was in WWE and I was in TNA. And I never thought I'd ever wrestle him. When I got the opportunity, I jumped at it. 
Uh, Meltzer said it was a good match in the sense they worked like pros and got a super reaction, which they were going to get no matter what they did. And just a very basic, solid match. After Angle won, the two shook hands and hugged. Alberto got on one knee out of respect for Kurt Angle. What do you remember about uh, the match between you and Alberto? You know what? I let him put it together. He structured it. Uh, he did an incredible job. I also let him call the match. He reminds me of Eddie Guerrero. Of course, he's a lot bigger than Eddie, but he reminds me a lot of Eddie. His mindset, uh, the way he goes out there and performs, um, he he is really talented. He knows how to structure matches, and he knows how to call matches. He's as good of an in-ring general as Eddie Guerrero was, and and I'm, I'm not bullshitting. I'm being honest about that. Mm. He, uh, Meltzer went on to say that you then got down on one knee for Alberto, uh, Hendry, who is the big local baby face would come out since he worked with you on the last show. He did Mike work, thanking angle for everything he's done for wrestling and talked about how much he looked up to you. Hendry started using the ankle lock after angle beat him with the move. Henry then turned on angle and gave him a low blow with the idea that it will make Henry the top heel in the company. The show went off the air like this, but after the show ended, Alberto made the save and angle ended the show with a speech, putting over Alberto and the promotion. Look at you making sure Henry got over as a heel. Kurt, always thinking about others. Were you happy to do stuff like that? Yeah. You know what? When you're getting paid 25 grand, okay. <laughs> Why do not? whatever, right? It's not going to hurt me by any means. I wanted to put the kid over. I thought it was a good, good thing to do. Your last match on the Indies, buddy, is a steel cage match against Cody from Waterbury, Connecticut. You That's drew three thousand dollar match. That guy. How much? Sixty thousand. Sixteen. No. <laughs> oh, sixteen thousand. Okay. Favor for Mike O'Brien. I got gotcha. you. Three thousand. I thought you said sixty. I about shit in my pants. Three thousand three hundred fans turned uh, and and they turned two hundred people away. You oh, guys get oh, before you say anything. Not only that, they had way more than that. They actually had the 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 fire chief came in and made people leave about six hundred people because they were standing room only and they went above beyond the occupancy. And it was crazy. I mean, they stopped the show and said, everybody needs to get out. These people need to get out. They wow. put 600 people outside. We had to give them refunds. So that was a long process. Well, listen, you guys get after it. Cody even goes for a moonsault off the top of the cage because that's what he does, man. He doesn't care. But th that's got to be a memorable last match for you for the you Indies, huh? He's he's the only person that does more moonsaults and misses than I ever did. <laughs> this kid... I wrestled him three times. He did three moonsaults and missed all three times. And one of them was off a steel cage. <laughs> Listen, obviously, Kurt, you would go on to be inducted in the WWE, have your run there, do the Hall of Fame thing. And uh, But did you enjoy doing all these shows? Was this a, a fun chapter that we just ran through with you of your career? Yes, it was very unstressful. Um, I didn't have a lot of stress. I could work on my own terms, go when I wanted to go, leave when I wanted to leave. It was a really cool year for me. It was a year where I got to know myself better. I started figuring myself out and, you know, uh, knowing what I enjoy and what I don't enjoy. Uh, it was a good little break for me. Even though I was working, I worked probably eight matches that year, maybe nine, but it was a good little break for me. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, now that you're retired and doing conventions and the like, because you're usually somewhere every other weekend, if not every weekend, any harsh stories with fans or promoters or workers, or, or has it just been pretty, pretty good for you? It's been pretty good for the most part. Uh, I see you smirking. Crazy stories right now. If I do think of them, I will definitely <laughs> mention them on the podcast in the future. <laughs> and we'll bury your asses, so you better pay Kurt Angle what he's owed. I love it. All right. Well, we got a couple fan questions, not many. Uh, Instagram or wrestling historian, which match of your trilogy with Cody did you like the most? Thanks in advance. Really? The one I won. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, so good. Come so on, true. I love the match. I didn't yeah, know. you got it. You got to know Kurt by now to know that he just really likes the matches he wins. Wrestling <laughs> wrestling match study podcast. Would you have loved to wrestle Will Ospreay and Minoru Suzuki in in a in blood sport? <laughs> of course I would. I mean, those two are really a talented individuals, especially Will Ospreay. I didn't even know this kid. I saw him wrestle one night and I was like, holy <sighs> shit. This kid can go. Um, so I definitely would have wanted to wrestle him. But, but the stuff with yeah. him and Kenny Omega, man, I'm a, a That's huge who I fan saw of. Wrestle. That's the match I saw. It was like eight stars. This match was incredible. 
Those guys can go. Uh, R2D2 playing the bass says, how did you find it wrestling Joe Coffey for ICW in Scotland in the same venue that the WWE use when they're in Glasgow? Also, any fun stories from that night? Um, no, I don't have any fun stories. I wish I did. Uh, the fun was when you took your check and left the arena. That was yeah, really that fun. Was, that was the most fun I had when I was doing that. <laughs> but no, no, the, the arena was, was awesome. I, I love that arena. And, uh, we did it. We did compete. Uh, we did perform in WWE. And I remember it was the same arena that I wrestled, um, uh, Joe Hendry. Yeah. So okay. It was a real, it, it, I remembered when I wrestled in WWE. Richie, our last question says, did you talk to Cody when he did the moonsault off the cage? What do you think about moves off the cage in general? <laughs> well, what am I supposed to say? I, I did them. I moonsaulted like five different times off the top of the cage. So I'm an idiot too. So I, I can't really uh, criticize people for doing that. I've done it many times. I think it's dumb as shit, uh, especially if you're going to miss. I did nail it one time when Ken Anderson and TNA, and that was, that was the best moonsault I did. It was actually the highest that their cage uh, uh, in TNA was about four feet higher than WWE's cage. Yeah. And, uh, I remember doing that and it was a long drop, but it was the only time that I landed on it. That was my favorite moonsault. Well, Kurt, listen, next week, the 20 year anniversary of no way out 2003, the shows from Montreal. And we're going to discuss your three on two match with team angle taking on Brock Lesnar and Chris Benoit as we continue your build to WrestleMania. Man, I can't wait for that. 20 years ago, Kurt Angle was a fun Kurt Angle to watch, and we're going to have a blast with it, dude. Yes, we will. We'll definitely have a blast. Uh, in the next few weeks, uh, we're going to be discussing two of your favorite opponents, Kurt. We got Steve Austin on the docket. We have the dead man, the undertaker as well. And you and I, Kurt, we're going to figure out the timing for this. Once we uh, are done recording, we're going to do another exclusive for YouTube from Kurt's angle. Kurt will be predicting the winners for the upcoming elimination chamber. Uh, man, we had a lot of fun with the Royal rumble. We did a quick, uh, guessing game for that. And, uh, you had everybody from Ronda Rousey to, uh, you know, I don't know who else went in some matches. We had a blast <laughs> and we're going to have fun. So you're, you guys, listen, you got to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you turn on the notifications. You can check out today's episode over there. Everything unfiltered. You get to see all these classic, uh, matches that Kurt had on the indie scene. And so we really appreciate that. Also check us out at ad free shows. As we said, we're going to be watching that Cody match in full this month. And there's so much extra content over there right now. You may have heard the name Gary Juster many times on the podcast. Well, now you'll hear about all his years behind the scenes for AWA, NWA, WCW ring of honor. And now he's with MLW and Conrad hosts the insider. So check that out. And, uh, listen, we're having so much fun over there. David Crockett's talking to Conrad and so many others. Uh, so we're really excited about that. Uh, again, check out Kurt Angle Show merch, boxagimmicks.com. Search Kurt Angle. We put it over at the top of the show, constantly adding merch over there. You can find us at anglepodlinks.com. That's where you're going to find all of our social merch and uh, show handles at anglepodlinks.com. Now it's our favorite time of the show when we get to find out what's going on over at physicallyfit.com. Kurt, you're, you're selling chicken snacks, aren't you? Oh, Tell yeah. us about your chicken snacks, buddy. I got my chicken snacks and my snack smart crispy protein bites. One's chicken. Pro These are actually both chicken snacks. Oh, there you go. One of them is snack smart. That's the organic, uh, um, organic, uh, plant protein. There you go. Chicken protein. One's organic plant protein. 11 di different flavors, all delicious. You're going to love them. Go to uh, physicallyfit.com to order yours. You use the code ANGLEPOD, get 20% off your first order. Or you could go on online on the website, become a lifetime member, and get 20% off the rest of your life. This is an incredible product. Uh, very proud of these. Um, I eat them every day. Uh, very good for my diet. Very good for yours as well. High protein, low carbohydrate. I guarantee you will love them. There you go. And also Kurt angle brand.com. Kurt mentioned it. He wasn't very good selling those t-shirts out of cardboard boxes and those cowboy hats, but he is now Kurt. Tell him, tell him about Kurt angle brand.com and what can they, they find over there? You can buy cowboy hats, milk cartons, uh, autograph photos, t-shirts, cameo voice messages. I got the whole ball of wax there. Go on the website, sign up and I'll send whatever you want right to you. 
Man, that's awesome. Kurt, thank you so much for doing this fun episode. Again, Kurt on the Indies. We're coming back next week with some 20-year anniversary WWE stuff. Guys, we really appreciate all the support, all the love on social, the traction on YouTube, and everything else. Uh, we want to thank you again for being a part of this week's show. On behalf of the Olympic hero, your Olympic hero, Kurt Angle, this is Paul Bromwell. We'll see you right back here next week on The Kurt Angle Show.